Arbors could be described as Ann Arbor's unofficial coffee king. He's changed the coffee landscape in the competitive college town over nearly two decades. And this morning, our Meredith Bruckner is on your block with Roos to hear how he got his beloved brand started. John Roos has created almost a movement around Roos Roast Coffee here in Ann Arbor. So how did he get started and what exactly is lobster butter love? Here's his story. I think your hands are like the best measuring tools. Julia Child always said that, like, use your hands, use your hands. So I just use my hands. We're going to double, put that in there. John Roos starts out his day making long pole coffee from beans he roasted. And then a lot of times I'll do like a yoga move while I'm letting it pre-infuse. <laughs> and then I just, you know, do the keep the yoga move going during that. Just like, just do this, mm -hmm, count, breathe, you know, all that stuff. And then when your coffee's ready, it's ready. <laughs> His favorite addition, a dash of olive oil. Honest answer, is your coffee better here in your kitchen or in the shop? No, actually, I got to tell you, it's, it's just as good in the shops. And this is very, a lot of times it's better because I'm so crazy and inconsistent. But they consistently, it if you get a long pull at Roos Roast, it's going to be amazing. His love for coffee began when the Ann Arbor native moved out west and began working in restaurants. Also an artist, he began journaling, writing and drawing visions of the life he wanted, all the time fueled by coffee. I have a whole collection of journals from like the 80s. I mean, these are super old. These are from like 1980 or something like that. Anyway, like this one's 1985, okay? I mean, this is one of the first ones. I went to the Culinary Institute. This is one of the journal that I, from that place. See, let's just randomly open a journal and just, I'll show you inside. There's just crazy drawings and lots of writing, a lot of complaining. Well, so I was already thinking about coffee back in the day. This is like Kung Fu Jesus was gonna be like a blend. Roos says moving to Portland, Oregon completely changed the way he looked at coffee and piqued his interest in starting a business of his own. Everyone was drinking coffee and drinking like microbrew beer and I was like super into it. I just like, wow, this is where I want to live. So I ended up living there for like 10 years and during that time I went to a lot of coffee shops. I just spent all my time writing journals in coffee shops and working, helping people open restaurants. And I came back to Ann Arbor and I was like, I kind of want to open a, co a roasting, coffee roasting business. And everyone was like, you're crazy. That's, that's ridiculous. And I ended up doing it and it was just like, I started roasting in a garage. The garage would end up being a pivotal part of his story. After selling his beans at the Ann Arbor Farmer's Market for a couple seasons, he was told he had to call the Department of Agriculture to get approved as a vendor. He finally got around to calling one Friday afternoon with his car loaded with coffee, ready for Saturday's market. I talked to this woman there, Beth, and she was like, where are you roasting your coffee? And I was like, in my garage. And she's like, you're roasting in a garage? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, you're shut down. So she literally like, I was like, oh no, I'm shut down. So. I just had a whole car full of this little Subaru full of coffee. So I think I just kind of peddled all that coffee off myself. But then that's how I ended up getting the space on Rosewood Street because there were some people roasting there called San Rafael. And they we I made a deal to roast my coffee at their place. So then history just goes from there that we took over the whole place. So then we came, it became Roos Roast. I actually really love snow shoveling. His philosophy to running a business is simple. Make a good quality product and invest time and energy in people. Also, know your coffee, but appreciate everyone's tastes. And if someone has a complaint, like just give them a new coffee. Don't argue with them, you know, don't make a big deal. And don't judge people if they put cream and sugar in their coffee. Like, I don't care, like just do whatever you want with it. He says growing up in a bustling college town like Ann Arbor taught him the basics of business. I live grown up here. And I'd gone to all the art fairs and football games and as a kid, you know, and I saw this sort of entrepreneurial spirit of just like, you know, people come and you sell them stuff and treat them right. Bruce opened his first location in 2008 at the Roastery and in 2016 opened a cafe in downtown Ann Arbor on East Liberty Street, blocks away from University of Michigan's campus. It's great to see you, man. Good to see yeah. you, too. So this guy's back from Traverse City, like, and his wife went that way, and he's here, and I met them yesterday. Amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thanks for coming in again. Well, thank you. It's the best <laughs> coffee in Ann Arbor and in Michigan. He's known for delivering coffee around town on bicycles or with this vintage van he fixed up and hand painted. So this van is from 1957 though and it still runs and it's a great van. Uh, it's a great van. That's hilarious. Um, it's not it's not that great of a van. You got to look inside. Come here. Come here. Check this out. It had an espresso machine in it at one point. We did like events where we were, you know, selling coffee and doing all this stuff. It was crazy. The Rosewood location is a roastery meets cafe meets retail store. This is Kieran. How's it going? He's the head roaster. He rocks this place out. Yeah. And I'll, I normally come in here and I say hi to Kieran and say, what's happening? How's the roaster? How's the beans? Oh my God, this smells so good. It's just like a perfect medium roast, lobster butter love, and it's consistent. It's so good. It just smells like butter, pure butter. Oh my God, yum. Kieran, good job, dude. Thank you, buddy. When it came to naming his blends, Roos relied on what he knows best, approaching his coffee shop like a restaurant. You know, you have your soup, your salad, your meat, your vegetarian thing. So I named the coffees names that people could remember. So there was the lobster was the medium roast, and then we had the rich French neighbor. This was based on my time in France, and that's a little darker roast. And then Portland in the 90s was like, in Portland in the 90s, people were roasting dark roast. That is a dark roast. Lobster butter love, mother pheasant plucker. It's got the same iambic pentameter. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Roos says the most fulfilling part of his work is having created a space where people can feel comfortable to come and enjoy a quality coffee every time. It may be weird, it may be funny, it may be none of those things, but it's going to be a good cup of coffee at the end with someone who really knows what they're doing. Reporting in Ann Arbor, Meredith Bruckner, CBS News, Detroit.